what a uh, what a great move on the first goal and uh, really I think uh, that may be as important as any goal to get rid of their lead as soon as as soon as possible you had to make the, the big moves even before you get over the, the blue line and then there was the third one of course that uh, eased everybody's attention a great game for you well I think the team play well both goalies played unbelievable tonight as you've seen and they put up a great effort and you got to give them a lot of credit for coming back so many times but uh, tonight we held on and uh, we uh, we really deserve to win did you just shave? Just shave, yeah. <laughs> Not before the game like others? No, no. Waited until uh, after it was over and everyone else did. But, uh, geez, uh, I was being a little superstitious there and I was hoping that it would come through and I'm glad it did came through, come through the way it did. What about the way the line played? It was a line that uh, included Kent Nelson at the end of the season and uh, gave us a lot of exciting moments. I'm sure it was a, a pleasure for you to play on a line that uh, was supposed to play like that. Well, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, with the addition of Kent Nelson and Mark and I play so well together, it's unreal. But uh, I think we had a good time uh, switching sides all the time. It looked like uh, Kent was playing the right side most of this this last series. In this last game, we switched sides. We went from uh, uh, I went from the left side to the right side, and I think that was a difference because their defense were getting a little tired, and uh, you could see him backing up on us a little bit. Has your centerman got anything broken in his foot? We're told he's in the training room and has not been out here. He took a heck of a shot from uh, Randy Gregg. Is he okay? Uh, I think so. He's one tough cookie, and I don't think he can. Uh, he'll be okay, and. Uh, I think he's, he's even ready to go a couple more. <laughs> yeah, this stuff feels good, doesn't it? Uh, the celebration began when Glenn Anderson scored. The game ended 3-1. to one. Jim Taddy and the boys in the studio, take it away. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, the series that went seven games, a lot of people grew up in that series, including us. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think to back to guys like Marty McSorley, who uh, didn't have a lot of respect before these playoffs started, and at the end of it, one of the better Oilers. Uh, John, I didn't know he was that good a hockey player. I really didn't. It goes back to how much you want to put into the game and how much you want to get out of the game. And he worked every single day with the coaching staff, and he worked with some of the better players in the league every day of practice, his teammates. And with the work ethic that he was able to show, he had a chance to play and did it very well. McClelland is a winger, a tough winger on the same side, but he was out with a flu virus and did not play much, so McSorley had a chance to step in and give it a go. And he, and he seized the opportunity, he seized the moment, and that's what makes teams uh, champions. They had some players that went out and played very well. Randy, Gr Randy Gregg played with a bad shoulder. I mean, things like that uh, make champions. Picking up on one of the questions that Dave Hodge, I think, was asking uh, uh, Charlie Huddy, uh, the Oilers, and we mentioned it briefly, uh, they're not just an explosive offensive machine now. They've had to learn to play defense, and I think you have to play that way if you're going to be a champion. It's taken them a number of years to they learn. a few tough lessons. Right, a real, real tough lessons, and uh, one of the most expensive lessons was when Calgary knocked them off, and Calgary deserved to knock them off. They stuck to their game plan. The Oilers did not, and uh, this year the, the coaches devised a game plan, and they tried to stay with it. Now, with Philadelphia coming back to win the last two games, the Oilers could have said, oh, we're going to go out there, and we're going to play run and gun, and just do their best to win at 9-8. They didn't do it that way. They played well, they played smart, and they played it for 60 minutes. All right, let's go to Dave Hodge and Kent Nielsen. Okay, I'm going to uh, tell you that Kent Nielsen, of the players I saw coming in here, uh, was the most emotional of the Edmonton Oilers, and uh, there's, there's, only, there's only one other way to say it. You, you were crying, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Uh, so that, that was. It was always a great feeling. You know, it's, sometimes those, thi those, those things happen, you can't hold back, and uh, when you play for eight years, you... You get lots of bad critics, you get lots of good critics, and these things happen. So that's just the way it is. Does it mean, uh, mean something special to, uh, to set up that goal? Uh, People were wondering when you were going to get a point. Yeah, I, was, I had lots of chances. I, had three. I never played six games with so many chances to have to score a goal or get a point. But I, it's a nice feeling when you can help the team. And uh, that was a good play for, from Anderson to get me the puck. That's the first time I played left wing this year in a series. And, uh, I don't know how to describe it. That's was a bad pass to Mark, and he still put it in, and it's I, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable feeling. Where are you going to be next year? Uh, I don't know yet. Okay. Think about it. Congratulations, Kent Nilsson. Craig McTavish is here. Uh, a lot of people pulling for you in this uh, in this series, and I'm sure that makes you feel good. Well, it does. It's it's an unbelievable feeling. I couldn't be happier right now. We worked hard for it. Uh, the fact that it went seven games it just makes it that much more enjoyable and that much more sweeter. They uh, they play like you play, and I guess uh, that makes you respect uh, the battle they put up even more. Well, 
that's why they didn't win. There's too many guys on their team like me and not enough scorers out there. But so we couldn't. Uh, we manufactured a lot of opportunities, a lot of scoring chances. Hextall played great. Uh, I think Grant Fuhrer played unbelievable in our goal. I, I, I thought he should have won the con Smythe in a winning cause. He, he played super the whole playoffs, not taking anything away from Hextall, but I think Grant Fuhrer did one a hell of a job. Craig, do you have a special word for uh, Glenn Sather and this organization for giving you the chance to be here? Well, I turned to him today on the bench, and I just looked at him, and uh, we both knew what we were looking at, what, what we felt, and uh, he gave me a good opportunity, and I don't want to go back on that, but I'm just happy to be here and happy to be a part of a great organization and much more a great hockey team. Enjoy it, Craig. Craig McTavish, you're watching Stanley Cup 87 from Edmonton, Jim Taddy. There's the final score. 3-1 Oilers win the Cup. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Take an effort a break. Take a break. Get away from it all. Take an effort a break. Well, the brick trick is right here in your old backyard. Get away. Get away. Take an effort a break. Oh, well, the break trick is right here in your old backyard. Yeah. At Edmonton Co-op, you're guaranteed a fantastic selection. Edmonton Co-op, it's the little things that keep me coming back. Top brand names along with exceptional co-op products at super low prices. Top quality meats and service that's second to none. Over 30 years of caring, now that's tradition. Who's got the drive that you're looking for? Weber Motors, the real car shop. Who makes it easy when you want a little more? Weber Motors, the real car shop. about gas barbecues, the more you'll like the Arclimatic Gas Grill. Push-button start. Solar-tempered glass window with built-in heat gauge. 20-pound propane tank included. The price? Only $199 complete. If you know gas barbecues, you'll know how good this price is. The Arclimatic Gas Grill. $199 at Wilco, where good value always starts with good quality. Well, let's congratulate the uh, co-coach of the Edmonton Oilers, uh, John Muckler. Uh, great feeling, huh? It's the best feeling in the world, Dave. I, you know, we've been through three now, and I, I think this is the greatest because I think this was the greatest team effort of the, the three that we won. Was there anything uh, special that, that you did, that Glenn did, that the organization did in getting ready for this particular game that you feel helped you play this well and win it? No, we, we felt we played very well in game six. It was just we took a bad penalty, of course, and that turned it around, and we were Philadelphia able to score on that power play and then came right back, and Daniel just made the perfect shot. I mean, there's nothing you can do about those things, but we felt we played very well. We felt we had everything under control in the third period up to that point, and we just wanted to duplicate that game, and I think we did. Uh, you saw a few goal posts in this game. Uh, did you start thinking that uh, it was beginning to become an omen? Well, you kind of felt, are you really supposed to win this? I mean, we out shoot them uh, two to one. Uh, you're hitting goal posts, and uh, you knew it wasn't over until that third goal went in, and you had your doubts whether you're going to get that third one or not. You expect to be back here next year? Oh, I'm sure I will. It's hard to beat this, isn't it? It's great. I hope this continues. Mark Messier is uh, still in the trainer's room, uh, though Glenn Anderson said there's nothing going to stop him. Apparently, Mark has trouble walking and isn't going to be out here to see us, and we won't invade uh, his territory. Let's go back to uh, ours, Jim Taddy. Thanks very much, Dave. You know, fellas, as you look at those interviews, you think of the scene there, and then you reflect on the opposite seat in the Flyers' dressing room, and you wonder what might have been if Tim Kerr had been healthy again. I don't think there's any question. Uh, he took uh, a lot of their offense away, and... As I said, Mike Keenan told us before the game they were playing with five or six players who normally wouldn't be playing if it wasn't a seventh game of the Stanley Cup final. Tim Kerr gets operated on probably this week. Two operations, one on the front side of his shoulder, one on the back side. Wish him luck and see him next year. And I don't mind me mentioning this. 
well officiated hockey game. Van Hellerman and his linesmen did a great job. Some people were wondering when we got those uh, first two penalties in the early part of that game. Penalties are penalties, and he called them. I thought they did a great job. What do you do if you're the Flyers when you want to uh, go back and uh, win the whole ball of wax next year? What do you try and improve on? I think they need, uh, well, first of all, they built their offense around Tim Kerr. They've got to be able to spread that out a little bit more. Uh, with Kerr, he's, uh, you know, if you really take and analyze the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team, you analyze their talent, there's not an overabundance of talent there, but it's a team concept, and they play with a lot of, lot of guts. Hardest working team in the league. Thanks very much. Now let's go to Dave Hodge. Well, we have talked to just about everybody here in the Edmonton Oilers dressing room that can walk. We are told that there's somebody on the phone here that w wishes to uh, to speak. Uh, hello, hello there. Yes, uh, Ward, is that you? Mr. President. Yes, is that you, Ward? <laughs> no, I, no, who would you like to speak to? Anybody in particular? Well, I, uh, I'll tell you why I'm calling. I was just napping briefly in the Ovaltine office, and... Uh, Nancy rushed in and she she brought me some very exciting news. I can't remember exactly what she said, but I think she just told me that the Houston Oilers have just won the Grey Cup. No, 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 no. The, it's the Edmonton Oilers and it's the Stanley Cup. And, yes. Uh, uh, you perhaps were pulling for Washington, were you? Uh, yes. Now, is that game over against the, the <laughs> Islanders? Did that one end? I Wh dozed where were off. you? I dozed off early during that one, and uh, I didn't find out what the final score was. Uh, Mr. President, this may yes. be part of this may be part of free trade. Uh, you'll want the Stanley Cup in the United States for six months out of the year. Uh, you might have had it longer had Philadelphia won. But do you have any words for the Canadian hockey fans watching and cheering the Oilers tonight? Oh, 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 that goodness for milk! Go on. It couldn't get any more exciting than this. Two magnificent hockey teams playing at a skill level and a tempo I don't think we have ever seen before in hockey. Mike Keaton, the coach of Canada, what do you expect to see happen tonight? I think you just said it the best. It's an all-out effort by two teams that are great teams. They're going to put everything on the line and take it to the limit. And it's going to be a fabulous sight for all of us to watch. Mike, best of luck to you and the rest of the team. Can. Thanks very much, Ken. Now let's go to Brad Park. I'm at ice level with Igor Dmitriev, the assistant coach and main spokesman for the Soviet team. Your team has played two great games, but you're going to have to have two or three players come through tonight. And who will they be? Five. Krutov, Makarov, Kitisov, Kasatonov, and Slavionov. Thank you very much, Igor, and good luck. We'll be with Ron Roosh and Dan Kelly in a moment, so stay tuned as it's going to be a great night in Hamilton. Game one, Friday night in Montreal in overtime. Alexander Samak wins it for the Soviet Union. Game two in Hamilton Sunday night. Wayne Gretzky feeds Mario Lemieux. And in double overtime, Canada wins to tie the series. to the Cups Coliseum in Hamilton, Ontario and the Labatt Canada Cup 1987. The final game tonight, the Soviet Union and Canada. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Hamilton. I don't know what more you can say about these two teams, except I'll say one thing. Tonight, somebody will win this game, win this series, but there will not be a loser. I have just witnessed two of the greatest hockey games I've ever watched, and I'm sure a lot of you have watched along with me and agree. Tonight, whoever wins will be a winner, of course, but the loser will not be a loser. They've both been winners. It's been unbelievable hockey. Ron Roosh, I don't know what they'll do to play game three, but after game one and two, expect anything. Well, expect anything. I, I know one thing that the two coaches downstairs have told me both clubs are just walking on air in the dressing room. Mike Keaton had to chase his hockey club off the ice during practice this morning. As for tactics, well, the Soviets have been ganging Grant Fuhr a lot, more than Fuhr has ever seen with a Soviet team. And as for Canada, they're